Today we're going to tie a pheasant tail pattern with a drop bead, insta jig beads, actually from First Drip Fly Company. This particular pheasant tail, I have come to really have a lot of confidence in for a couple reasons. One, it's a quick tie, it's easy to tie. I am not a guy, personally, who likes a lot of flash in his flies, or at least I'm adapting to that. I'm slowly bringing flash into my flies. It is a little bit more of a realistic pattern as far as size goes, lack of flash. But then here's something that in the Euro nymphing world that I've had to kind of regulate and deal with on a personal level when it comes to flash. Almost all our flies have beads. And those beads, one, are not realistic to most insects. They can be in certain situations, some um, some coppers and, and some black beads, of course. Um, interesting, though, is that that's your flash. Like, there's flash built in just by the very fact that there's a bead on it. Anyways, this pattern comes from Devin Olson. It is a Frenchy pattern, but it's a very drabby Frenchy pattern. I recommend tying this in 20s, 18s, 16s. If you're on rivers where bugs are big enough and you think you can get away with it, tie them in 14s. I generally don't tie larger than a 14 unless I'm tying a stonefly pattern and I know those insects are large in there. Or I can get away with it in dirtier water. So... Let's get into that. So I'm using Firehole. Um, these are the 633s. I'm using in this particular tie, I don't have a box to show you, but it's the actual, um, six thirty sevens that I use. It's a wider gap hook. These nymph hooks are super strong. I use these on most of my egg patterns now. Then I'm using for my bead, right now on this one, it's a 3.3 millimeter Instajig from First Drift Fly Company. I have found that for the going rate, actually lesser, less than the going rate of most of your regular tungsten beads, First Drift is selling these Instajigs for an incredible price. So can't beat them, and I've got them in various colors but not too many colors this year i am adapting a principle that i have been playing with for the last few years and really simplifying my fly box for the body material well for thread i'm using um semperfy i love this thread for the body i'm using this olive light olive pheasant tail feather. The reason I'm doing olive is because some of the waters we're already going to really soon to see some of the betas kicking around and olive is just a good color. It's a good color to have kind of in your mix. It's kind of tough to see this olive in here. Um, I could see it really clear with my naked eye if you will uh, but this is an olive tint. And then um, you're probably thinking, well, what are you using for your wraps? Well, that's the cool part about this tie. So let me just put that guy on there, and we'll get hook and bead in the vise. And we'll get this thing started. So you've probably seen videos where people put some glue up here to hold this down. I don't do that because I am a terrible mess with glue. So what I've decided to do, and it works fine, I don't think the fish are down there reasoning when they see this underbody from a little bit of thread exposed that they're saying, well, I'm just not going to take that. Um, so what I do, I'm going to start my thread behind the bead. Now remember, being that this is gel spun, it is a little slippery, okay? So you can actually put um, a little bit of tack on there if you want to help with it, but what I do... Start it small. I try to conserve as much thread as possible. I will go one, two, three, four, and then come up around the front of the eye of the hook three times and around that bead. 
And what that does, because of this particular product, I can give that a good tug. And that bead is really decently set in. So then I take my thread, touching wraps, to right at the bend of the hook. Okay? Then we're going to cut off the excess. Tailing fibers. I'm using, well, I finally found some, some Coke de Leon in um, Dark Pardo. Love this stuff. I'm not going to use much. This is a sparse tie. I don't need much. Three, four, five uh, pieces, about all I want. Now, being that I ran it to the back, I want you to lay that on there at an angle. The feathers are on at an angle. Then I take a wrap over top of it and another wrap over top of it, let it dangle. It gives me the opportunity now to pull those tail feathers in because I, I don't want them way, way, way back. So then I can just hold it and make a couple wraps going forward to hold that in there good like that. And then cut the excess out. The other thing about this thread is it doesn't cut super easy. You're going to need sharp scissors or you're going to need to sharpen your scissors. So now, again, we got our feather. I'm going to take just a pinch of this. Four or five pieces. <clears throat> I always cut the, the tips. Um, I always cut the tips off straight. It just makes it easier to tie in. Again, start now at the behind the bead. I'm angling my feathers across the shank of the hook, putting a soft wrap, soft wrap tight, and it's it's locked in there. And now I work my way back, kind of touching wraps to right where that feather ends. Okay? Then I'm going to turn my vise like this. And I'm going to try to do this so you can see it. So if I turn it like this, you should be able to see it. And the reason I do this is because this ingenious tie allows me to put no wire on here. But I have this gel spun, crazy tough thread that I can just give myself a little bit of extra. I'm going to take this down. Now, I've never done this facing the camera, so, so please bear with me. I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap very nicely the feather around the thread. Okay? Now the reason I tilted my, the head of my the jaws here is because if you do this with it upright like this, you're going to cut the daylights out of that feather because it's going to hit the hook invariably. It just happens. Now that I have that wrapped, for all those folks out there that think you can't find a good use for your rotary, well now I could take my rotary whoop, and really fast and easy give myself a nice little body, get up behind the bed of the hook. Now I hold my finger on this and holding my finger on that I can release the thread that's left, make a couple wraps around it, behind the bee or behind the feather, and a couple wraps in front of the feather. And now I'm ready to cut this off, the excess. So another thing that will hold, help hold, secure that bead in is I don't have to put 100 wraps on here if I use just a little bit of uh, um, uh, super glue or in this case, zap -a gap and then I just whip finish it one, two, three, four times. And in the process of doing that, all that glue went down in behind that bead. It'll hold the thread and it'll also help hold that bead upright. My tail's a little down there, but that is a quick tie. This is simple. Do this in some dark colors. Do this in, I mean, any color you choose to for that matter, but it's a really, small simple fly that you could tie a bunch of in a bunch of different colors and most importantly choose a hook size or two and just tie these in a bunch of different weights 
because that'll be more important than the colors in my opinion. I hope you enjoyed this really simple pheasant tail. Get out there, get some flies tied, and get fishing. Thank you for your time.